Hello and welcome back to another video come the OCI GCSE Computing course. Today we're looking at topic number 13 and this is the last topic in this data representation chapter and it's about how instructions are represented by a computer. Um, quite a heavy video potentially so maybe make notes if that's appropriate if, if you're not revising the night before make notes perhaps that might be useful because there's a lot of information to cover in this video so um, let's first have a look at something we're almost doing a pre recap because I'll cover some of this stuff in a later video um, in quite a few topics time but we have a spectrum for programming languages at one end of the spectrum we have what's known as machine code and machine code is essentially the binary numbers so zeros and ones just lots of bits patterns and a computer can understand all of this but someone looking at this who's not a programmer would just see zeros and ones it would mean nothing um, and machine code are the raw instructions used by the CPU um, in the form of bit patterns and we'll look at bit patterns in a couple of minutes so at the other end we have ordinary languages so some is called natural languages um, so unless and these are English, German etc so unless it was taught to um, a computer was taught to in the case of artificial intelligence which is really basic at the moment but I'm sure in 50 years time will be a lot more advanced a uh, computer can't understand ordinary, ordinary languages because in our head in our brains um, the words are represented by images so if someone who's born deaf for example in their head they will think of words in the form of images not not words or sounds if that makes sense because they've never heard sounds um, so computers can't understand this only humans with our complex brains can understand ordinary languages at this current moment so yeah for example of this if you inspect them English or German then you have programming languages such as Python who are slight who are mainly who consist of mainly words but some numbers and some things that um, a non-programmer wouldn't understand then you have other languages such as JavaScript which are further down then C++ um, and then you have what are known as assembly languages which is sort of what things are written in which are basically machine code and this is so essentially only machine code and assembly languages um, they're uh, regarded as low-level programming languages and the rest are sort of high-level programming languages they are closer to normal languages normal with, with words people that uh, these programming language languages non-programmers -program could in theory understand maybe less so at this end and then you have these low level languages which only specialists could understand maybe even none at all if it's just machine code and um, we'll look at this in more detail in a further video but this is sort of like a bit of a recap hopefully um, so it's important to understand that a programming language or just to make sure you appreciate that a programming language is simply used to communicate instructions to a computer use a programming languages to control a computer in some way so um, let's have a look at what bits patterns are I mentioned them just before so bits patterns um, essentially are the code represented to um, yeah to represent instructions so when you execute a computer program written in a high level programming language what is known as a translator converts the instructions into machine code again translator we'll look at in more detail in a future video but a translator translates you what you've written in a programming language into the machine code so the computer can use it and the machine code is in the form of patterns of bits binary digits which are one and zero for example this is just an example of the processor how it represents it you do need to know all this so here we've got a um, instruction in Python 5 plus 10 very simple um, but a computer can't it doesn't understand what that means because that's it just doesn't understand anything other than binary so it has to convert it so each high level instruction is split into smaller low level instructions in the form of machine code and these low level instructions are split into what is known as an operator which is essentially the instruction and some may also call it a opcode I've seen it written for example to use this but you can they also allow operator which is what I was taught and an opera and and operand is essentially the data I had to double check this stuff because it doesn't actually say in respect but this definitely exam questions have come up on this um, and they probably will come up again so in our example here 5 plus 10 the plus sign is an example of the operator is telling you what to do it's the instruction and the data involved is v5 and the 10 and these are the operands so the way it would do this different processors do this differently so for example an intel processor an amd processor would do this vastly different differently probably but the same principle um, but what they do each operator and each operand are represented and stored in a bit pattern so just ones and zeros so for example here if i'm using a nibble to represent each operator and operand which it wouldn't actually do because that doesn't give you enough combinations um, 
this 0010, so 2 in binary, will maybe be represented as add. This may be 10, this may be 2, and this may be 5. So this would sort of form this instruction. And like I said, I've just made this up. Um, this wouldn't actually be used, most likely. I don't know. I don't work for a processor company. I just know the theory behind it. Um, so, and then we've got other ones. But as you can see here, hopefully you spot that this operator, this opcode, here is the same as this one. And that means that this because we know it's represented by 2 add 10 to 5 this will also represent 2 as an instruction because it's part of an instruction set so an instruction set um, basically it's like a table with each instruction given a unique um, operator which is basically what that says there so if we have our code here again each I've, I've done it by colors just so you can see it wouldn't Clearly, it wouldn't be like this. Um, this turquoise color, this, tur this, uh, this turquoise color represents the operators, and each one will be part of a huge table that the process is built with, um, that has a unique um, operator for each instruction. So this is add. This would be two, and then we have the two repeated several times. So it can be repeated in a bit pattern, but each operator has a unique binary representation. So this being two, this cannot be anything different because it's represented by the same binary number so it's important to establish that each one is unique and so that's how it understands what to do um, so it's important that a processor can distinguish between data and instructions so if we look at our bit pattern again um, hopefully again you'll notice that here we've got our operand and this is our operator or opcode and it's the same and I said that this has to be unique the operator has to be unique but this the operand doesn't have to be unique um, they can be represented by the same bit combination and so the processor for it to do anything with this information it must be able to understand what is a bit uh, not what is a bit what is an operator and what is an operand it must understand the difference so the way it does this it can't actually look at them and go oh this is an operator operand this is this is data this is an instruction it can't just do that it um, it knows the position of it so it knows so in our example and again I don't know if it's actually like this I've there's no evidence to suggest that it isn't um, because presumably this is very top secret information because for competitors in the processor market don't want people to know how they actually work um, to an extent obviously this the simple basics are available to know um, so the way in our example what it would know it'd be programmed the processor when it's made it'll know that the first four bits the first nibble is the operand uh, the operator and maybe you'll know that the second four bits are the operand and it'll know this cycle repeats so it'll know that what this is the uh, this is the 17th um, bit you'll know that the next four will be the operand uh, operator it's difficult to get confused between the two and just let me re-emphasize the data is the operand and the instructions are the operator and it'll know basically it distinguishes between the two by knowing the position of of each it'll know the cycle and over pattern and that is important to know um, so that's it next up we're looking at databases hopefully this video was somewhat easy to understand it takes a while to get used to like I said at the beginning if you have time maybe make some notes that would be useful go over the bits um, rewind go over bits that maybe aren't clear hopefully I've been as clear as possible um, so yeah thanks a lot for watching